Yes, I think uh, we start with uh, uh, Aliona and uh, by ladies. Mm -hmm. And how we revived uh, by ladies together with by Amsterdam by the great coincidence. One year ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll just second what it is. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me here and thank you for being the first one to having the virtual online workshop. I think we just some one week behind the schedule. Um, yeah, just really, really briefly, we are, by, we, <clears throat> okay, me and Demi, we are PyLadies Amsterdam. Uh, it's a part of global PyLadies chapter. Uh, pretty happy to be here and we concentrate mostly on workshops uh, instead of talks and do talks only two times per year with other um, Python groups. Uh, and within one week we'll be given our uh, first online workshop. So I think I had a lot of questions for you guys, but I will uh, ask them later. Um, yeah, it will be about how to write um, Azure functions in Python. So it will be more about first code refactoring and then uh, doing it on Azure, definitely. So for all who is interested, welcome. And yeah, I'm pretty happy to see how it will evolve. Uh, I mean, the whole seat, not the whole situation, but I mean, um, the possibility that we see right now, uh, the possibility of online meeting, because before we say, oh, we do doing only offline stuff, maybe in the future we'll have a combination of both. So thank you so much once again. And I think it's time for other people to jump in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I would love to, to host our meetup together in the next weeks. So let's talk about that. Who's next? So who's next? Yes. Uh, next one is uh, Yuhamati and self-documenting code, kind of. So I'm going to start. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yes, good. So hey everyone, I'm Yuis. And every now and then, this topic comes up people, whether it's internet, Twitter, Stack Overflow, whether it's meetups or conferences, people start to talk about code comments and whether it's good to have them, whether it's bad to have them. I personally have yeah. comments and documentation of my code. Wait a minute. I think my slides. I broke something. There we go. So to, to start, I wrote 
Oh, because we don't want to put it twice. And if it doesn't, we insert the dog script into the new place. If you use exactly four spaces, if you use two spaces, if you use tabs, everything goes wrong. And we search for the original document call. Write the original code in the source file with the new one with modifications. So if you actually run this, you risk losing all your code, like happened to me when I was developing this a lot. I kind of want to write this to have some kind of code to show to people to start the discussion. Oh, some nice. <laughs> Thank you. Nico, you have the timer as well? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. I will let you measure the time. So next one is uh, Carla Feifarova at Python Tip. And your five minutes start now. One, yeah. Okay, can you see can you see the presentation? Yes. Great. Yes. So, so I'm welcome. Hello from Prague. It's I'm not alone here. I'm with my cat at home. <laughs> and I want to talk about our Twitter account, uh, Python Tip, which we started a few years ago with with Petr Šimeček. And yeah, a few years ago we were starting learning Python, and we were not no idea what we are we were doing. And well, some people, some people, when they start to learn a new language, they just buy a book and then they buy all books. Some people just use these three books, which I really like and which I find really, really good when you are learning something is to share it with the, with the others because it really helps, helps you to, to like, uh, Make it to make it clear for you, and that that's why we started that Twitter account, and we 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 post some serious th serious things about past lips, some some th things about pandas, but there are some not so serious things about emojis and so on. And strangely, these 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 tips get the most most likes. And yeah, now after after like three years, we can we know some Python, and we we are not not sure what what is in what what will be interesting for for people for our followers, and well, now I mostly work with R because I'm I'm forced in work to to use R, so I'm really not using Python so much and now we, we need need your help. Just uh, send us your tips. Uh, there's uh, this address bit.ly Python tip or just mention us on Twitter at Python tip and help us. So that's all Ooh. for me. Thank you. So I, I, I will give you time to the next person to to, to start presenting. Uh, in a few, I'm going to share a link. Uh, we got uh, the O'Reilly where send us uh, they send us a link that we can share to everyone participating in the meetup. 
to have like a three month trial uh, using the the learning platform that they have. So I'm going to share that link now in the, the chat. Okay, so next next one in line is, is me actually. Hmm. So I am ready okay. when you start the timer. It's on. So, so my talk is about uh, statically dynamic web. And I have this, uh, I decided to make my website and to learn some bootstrap and some javascript but i i also wanted to do it python with python so this is a statically then uh, st static website that, uh, generated by pelican it's a blogging uh, python package this website is hosted on zaitco uh, uh, also known as now now sh it offers a cdn a static uh, hosting and also serverless functions serverless functions are cool because sometimes when you have a blog you want to have a search and uh, there are some javascript search engines but you need to you need a client to download all all the content from your website before the client can start search. So I was uh, looking to, for the way around it. Let's see if it, yeah, it still works. And I found out that the Zate offers a serverless. Uh, serverless is just a Lambda function running on AWS and you write your code uh, the same way as you would write it for the lambda and i'm using a search engine called Vush. it's pure python a search engine uh, api is a little bit similar to elastic and to plug it to pelican i it's a, i have a very simple plugin which just generates a Vush index, which is file, which is just a, some binary files. And then during the website deployment with now, which is just one deployment command, it, it's perfect, uh, try it. It uploads the Lambda and it updates my website. And when I hit the search button here, it will trigger the Lambda. And I get the results as a JSON and with JavaScript code, I just dis display it. That's it. Cool. So I think it's a... Uh... Yeah, if you have uh, any questions about it, uh, let me know, I can give you a guidance or introduce you to the, to it. Yeah, I, I chose Pelican because I also like uh, to write RST instead of Markdown. So now we need Roberto to talk about uh, Nicola. And Roberto was is a maintainer of Nicola. He's also a static website. He was in the, in the, in the attendees. So who is the last one? So last one is Michal and his talk is serverless machine learning. So get ready. Uh, hi guys. <laughs> cool. Can you see my presentation? I hope yes. so. Cool. Um, so let me do it pretty quick. So uh, we have everything. Um, my passion is uh, to fight technical debt. And uh, um, I realized that a lot of projects have a lot of technical debt. Um, usually you can imagine that as, uh, as a lot of uh, 
dirty dishes in your uh, kitchen and uh, you have to clean it before you can build a, a big project and uh, before it is successful. So um, we actually decided to, to help to, to fight the technical debt. And uh, this is how I, I felt with uh, during, uh, during my uh, talks to my clients and stuff like that. Um, and we built Kodiak.io, which is uh, a platform that helps you measure the technical debt and gives you actionable tips uh, how to fix uh, specific things in, in, your, in your source code. We, of course, uh, uh, can analyze Python as well. Uh, but I would like to show you something else. And this is uh, how, how, we, how we actually operate. So briefly, this is our little serverless ar architecture. Uh, the whole product is serverless. We run on, on top of AWS Lambda. And we have 18 different microservices that communicate between uh, each other. However, uh, we have one that is uh, very important and the component is called Linguist. Uh, and this is something which uh, clones your repository and uh, understands what all languages do you have there. So for example, if you have Python, uh, as well as some shell scripts for, for deployment and, and other stuff, or maybe you have some JavaScript thing for front end, stuff like that. We will all recognize it and show it to you as a nice chart uh, in the UI. To accomplish that, uh, we have quite, uh, uh, quite interesting tool for that. Uh, and this is several strategies that we implement uh, to understand uh, the languages. Uh, of course, uh, we have some very straightforward strategies like file names, extensions, stuff like that, but we have even some heuristics and the uh, most interesting one is a machine learning classifier. Uh, we can differentiate uh, more than uh, 450 languages uh, and this is done in, in less than one second for even, even bigger repos. Uh, and let me show you how this is done. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we uh, created a prototype in PyTorch. Uh, however, it's way easier uh, to uh, operate uh, in JavaScript uh, in serverless because there is way more tooling around and stuff like that. Uh, it's getting way better, but in the days when we started, uh, JavaScript was the way to go. So we did two things. We rewritten it uh, to JavaScript and the machine learning part uh, to C++, especially the tokenizer because of speed. Um, and this is how we actually do, uh, do the training. Uh, the tokenizing is the first part of the process. So we have to break down uh, each, uh, each token of the source code. So as you can see, this, these are a few tests and we are trying to strip down just, just uh, uh, keep only the important things in the programming language. We don't care about the variables, about the naming, about the uh, non-important stuff for recognizing, uh, but we are trying to uh, keep, it, keep it simple. Then we feed that into a classifier and give it correct uh, languages. And at the end of the day, uh, we just ask the database, what is it? Uh, and and the, the classifier can recognize uh, the language by its source code. This is practically it. This is what I wanted to show you. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to reach to me on Twitter or anywhere else. Oh, nice. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Michal. Thank you. So yeah, technical debts cost a lot of money, so... <laughs> <laughs> now we can save some. No, uh, really, I, I, I mean, uh, try, the, try the tool. Uh, I tried it on, on my own website project. Uh, when I uh, ran it for the first time, it's shown like a thousand JavaScript errors because I have never written JavaScript before working on my website. And I didn't have to set up anything. And I just ran it on my project and I could directly go Oh yeah, this is a JavaScript error. Okay, thank you. And you can go through your code. There are some annotations and 
when there is an error code, it will take you to the documentation of the error if possible. It's really super nice. Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. So I was I was sharing uh, again a link for O'Reilly for a month, a free month, I think, uh, for the learning platform. Maybe I think it's good timing for to start doing some learning online. Uh, thank you everyone for Lainey Talks. I, I, I'm really happy that we were able to, to do Lainey Talks because it was, uh, was <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were planning how to and, and I think it was really good. Um, so I think that was all. Thank you everyone. Thank you to me and Chuck. It was, uh, and it was a really nice uh, talks there. Um, and please send us some feedback, send us some pictures. We have a... We are, we are tweeting some pictures from people like uh, taking a picture of the TV in the meetup. Um, and any feedback is welcome. Uh, we are we are probably we are going to host a meetup next week or, or in two weeks. It will depend a lot again in the speakers. So if you want to uh, participate as a speaker, you're welcome. Uh, even if you, know, if you are not from Amsterdam, this is the best moment to participate in our meetup. Um, yes, I think that's all. I know, Jan, if you have, if you want to add anything else. No, I just uh, wanted to say that now all of us should clap to ourselves, even yeah. all <laughs> the attendees, which we cannot see, unfortunately. So, <laughs> thank you. That's so weird. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. See you all. See you next time. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.